two, one, we're live. Hello, and welcome to panel number two of day four of the Black Cat Comics Rock and Milpitas Pre Comic Con Comic Con. Uh, our first panel was Getting Into Comics. Uh, you can Hello. view that welcome here on our uh, YouTube page four, there. Comics, uh, uh, and Comic-Con, this Comic-Con. is our second uh, panel, our first panel which is Collecting comics. Vintage Comics. Uh, you can Hello. view that welcome here on our uh, YouTube page four, there. There we go. Oh, reverse on the side. There we go. And here we are. Okay, so we're collecting vintage comics. Uh, and with me is my uh, ever compatriot, Marcus Slaughter, <laughs> expert of all things comics, particularly in the collecting vintage. You'll recognize his voice from our weekly podcast. Um, always great to have you, Marcus. Thanks for joining me. Oh, yeah. Well, vintage comics is our expertise, so... Uh, it's 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 my passion. I'll say that I I, don't, I can't consider my well. I guess I'm an expert by default, but I don't really think myself as such. So, uh, talking about collecting vintage comics, why why are you watching this? Why are we here? Uh, vintage comics is its own beast. I think uh, I'll speak for what I think is ninety percent of of people who read old comics. One of two things happens to you. You're reading new comics and you get old. And the comics you used to read yeah. became vintage comics on you. So you, you, you don't collect vintage comics. You just collect comics and you're vintage and so they're vintage. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's how you and I ended up yeah. in this. Um, if you're not 100 years old like we are collectively, uh, then, then you come across it in a different way. You are reading current comics or you go and see the movie or you got the Bar- Batman video game or whatever it is, uh, and you are introduced to, to the concept of, of vintage comics. And, and so why them and not the new comics and whatnot? Okay, if you're a fan of new comics and, and you realize you're reading the current Action Comics is number right. 982, uh, well, that tells you obviously there's 981 other yep, issues that you. That's your first key. Uh, that's, your, <laughs> that's your first clue is that they're at number 982, and and you don't have any of them, so that means there's 981 of them that you've missed. Uh, as we said in the getting into comics panel, that doesn't mean you have to go read the other 981, <laughs> but uh, if you're so inclined and and you want to go back and check out that earlier stuff, well, now you've opened a Pandora's box of a million questions, of a hundred million things you would have never thought about before. Uh, As I said in the earlier panel, uh, pretend for a second that Marcus and I here are you 20 years in the future and and we're giving you these pieces (laughs) of advice. We're telling you these things that we wish somebody had told us uh, back in 1980, 1990, uh, to save us a little money, a little hassle, a little whatever it is. And, and really, we're here just to help you streamline your collection, to keep your collection exactly what you want it to be. Uh, so I think that's a little bit of the gist. Um, I myself have kind of narrowed this down to a who, what, where, when, why, and how sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what I thought. Why is, it, is a, a, a good question right that's, there. That's exactly why, right. Why uh, the yeah. who is you, the, the watcher, the viewer here. Mm-hmm. You are the person uh, who is the who. The who is you. What is your goal? Uh, why are you here? And then, as we said, the, the, the main goal, I always like to think the main goal is entertainment. You buy these things yes. because you like to read them, you like the art, you like the character, you like the whatever, you like this stuff, so you buy it. The other reason is investment. Uh, and one thing I want to say from the outset is that collector is not a bad word. Investor no. is not a bad word. Uh, over the years, since the 80s and certainly since the 90s, the hardcore readers, the hardcore comic lovers have started this sort of us versus them thing with, with the quote unquote collectors. I'm here, my own little humble opinion to say we're all collectors. Whether you're going to, if you keep what you buy, you're a collector. Yeah. If you don't throw your comics away when you're done with them, you're a collector. Uh, so get it out of your head that that's a bad word. Get it out of your head that that's a bad thing to be. Get the phrase, I'm not a collector, out of your vocabulary. Uh, because, like I say, if you don't throw them away, you're a collector. Maybe you're not doing it for the investment and resale per se, but if you buy a vintage comic, you want to take care of it, you want to keep it, you want to love it, and and that's important. So well, that's you, how most of us became comic book fans is you got it, you read it, you put it away, and then one day you went back and looked at it, and it was worth money, and then you became a collector. That's really sort of how it goes. 
Yeah, that's that's really true. And there's a difference. There's collectors, there's speculators, there's readers. You know, and I, I like to think that um, we're all of them. Yeah. We like to speculate. We like to read. And we're definitely collected. All those long boxes I moved today uh, shows that. <laughs> that's, that's true. I'll show this really quick. You're going to see this book a lot today. This is X-Men number 137. I'm going to use this as my example for a lot of things. And since you mentioned it, I'll mention it as, as collectability or investment or whatever. I bought this book because it, because it was written and drawn by or drawn by John Byrne. Uh, because I was 12 years old, and I bought anything that said John Byrne on it. Yep. Uh, a couple of years later, for a hundred thousand reasons, this book became valuable, uh, and so you wanted more copies of this book. This was in nice shape, with a nice square bound. Uh, like I say, I'll use this as an example of a lot of things, but it's the kind of book you buy for entertainment, and then you realize later on, hey, I made an investment. Uh, and so you're obviously not going to throw it away. You're going to keep it, love it, and all that kind of good thing. In a case of like that book, you're going to read it over and over and over again. <laughs> so that's the who so and that's the why. Uh, the, the big one, the big one that's going to take the majority of this panel time here, the reason I needed help today uh, is the how. Because the, the how is, is the biggest thing that, that you need to, to figure out for yourself. Uh, one thing I always talk about in all aspects of comics is to do what you like to do, uh, buy what you like to read, buy what you like to collect, uh, invest in what you want to invest in. We're giving you some guidelines. Uh, I never on earth tell anybody what to buy or what not to buy, what to like and what not to like. It's none of my business. You want a full set of ROM Space Knight? Get out Go there and, and, and ROM yourself. <laughs> uh, so like I say, the, the how is the big thing. I think first and foremost, um, I'm sorry, second. Again, first and foremost is buying what you like. Uh, again, I'll use X-Men as my generic example. We can use Superman. We can use whatever term you like as, as a generic example. Um, but but the, the second big thing is budget. Uh, yeah. I, I think, I think the, the, the big topic you have, no matter what you're going to buy, no matter what you're going to do, uh, you only have X number of dollars. You only make X number of dollars. MasterCard will only front you X number of dollars. <laughs> uh, so, so you really need to be smart about this. You need to be smart about your budget. You need to be smart about what you buy, how much you buy, what you pay for things. Um, and that in itself opens up a million questions. I'm not here. I don't know how much money you make. I don't know what you do for a living. I don't know how much money you're willing to spend on your comics. But I can tell you how to make the most of your of your comic budget. Mm -hmm. um, and and so, Marcus, why don't we talk about uh, grade and price, which which I think is is kind of the the main mm -hmm. budget point. Uh, any book you buy, and I'll talk about. And I, I'll step aside from this next one. Let's talk about an old Batman issue, old issue of Detective Comics. Here's an old 1960s issue of Detective Comics. Um, you tell yourself, I love Batman. Detective is the main Batman run. I want to collect me some Batman comics. Okay, great. So you walk into your comic shop. Here's an old issue of Detective Comics. I don't know if you can see it. I've got this one priced at $20. Uh, what number is that? It's number 339. I'm sure you know exactly all about this book. So well, it's, a monkey uh, it's important to know two things. It's important to know why your comic book guy is charging what he's charging for this book. And it's important to know whether or not you should be willing to pay that amount of money for that book. Uh, there's a thousand and one things that make this book $20. Is it the first appearance of somebody? Does somebody die in this issue? Uh, is it written or drawn by somebody right. famous? Yeah. Um, is it is the book itself all beat up? Is the book itself in pristine condition? All these things that, that you need to ask yourself. And that's going to tell you whether or not you should pay $20 for that book. So, so Marcus, how do we know? How do I know this book's worth the $20 sticker price? The best thing to do with, especially if you want to, if you want to collect vintage comics, you do have to take a little time to educate yourself about grading. Um, number one, because you don't want to get cheated. You're out there looking for books, and you don't want to get cheated. You don't want to have to pay too much for something. So you have to be familiar with what the grades are. Uh, the best thing to do is to get one of these uh, overstreet grading guides. Uh, it explains each grade. There's, uh, we'll just use, uh, there's fair and there's poor, but for our points, we have good. There's good. There's very good, there's fine, there's very fine, there's very fine near mint, and there's near mint minus. 
there's also near mint, but the guide only goes up to near mint minus. Uh, near mint books uh, are out there. It's just that they're uh, not as plentiful as uh, near mint minus books, so that's why I don't put them in the guide. Next thing you have to do is you have to familiarize yourself with um, the books that you want to get too, because you have to know is a book a key, and that's another good thing for the Overstreet. The Overstreet guide that we have here tells you if um, a book is like a, like you were saying, like a first appearance, or if it's uh, the first art by so and so, or the first story by so and so, because those are probably the books you want to collect. You probably look in the Overstreet and you look at your prices, and you saw, oh hey, there goes the first appearance of like a detective, the first Prince of Bad Girls in there. You're like I want to get that, and I look at it and I see in the guy that it's probably like a thousand dollars. You say to yourself, oh, I can't afford a thousand dollars for that book. That's way too expensive. But I can look and see what the price is for good or very good, and that might be something that I can afford. Let me see what the price is for good. So it's two thousand in um, mint condition, but it's only a hundred dollars in good. Now I could probably swing a hundred dollars for that book if I saw it. So okay, I want that book, and I'm willing to pay a hundred dollars for it. So I'm looking for a good. A good's not going to be a very good. It's not going to be. This is probably right a VG. I'm still looking at it. There's, I'd say, a little discoloration. There's some wearing. There's some yep. spine wear. Mm -hmm. A little curling. No, no dramatic flaws. This one, I've looked at this one before, so I know that this one is like a near mint. That this book is, is like a near mint minus. Very nice, so great this one is really color, good. <laughs> uh, square spine. You don't see that book too often, too. That's another reason, and it, it's another added thing into collecting vintage books. You have to learn which books you don't see in mint condition very often, and when you do see one, you have to just you have to buy it mm -hmm. because, as we always say. Books are never going to be cheaper than what they are right now. They're going to go up. They go up every year. And so if you don't get it now, you're going to probably pay more <laughs> next year yeah. to buy it. And that's, that's a, and I'm glad you mentioned that because that's, that's really important when we're on the subject of how. Mm -hmm. Prioritization is key. Uh, like I said in the beginning, I'm going to, going to give you a bit of advice I wish somebody had told me. Uh, many, many, many decades ago when comics were carved into stone, um, I decided that I wanted to complete the run of Avengers. I wanted every Avengers comic. Yeah. Um, let's see if I can remember what number it was. I think it was 227. I'd been buying for a while, but I think it was at 227 uh, when Henry Pym gets kicked out. He's in jail and whatever. Anyway, I was just right. loving the Avengers at that time and got in my head that I would have every single one of these issues. Uh, so. I set out, uh, went to every comic shop I could, went to, to every convention I could, but I made one very serious mistake, which is <laughs> I bought all the cheap ones first. Uh, I would go to the conventions yeah. and I would go to the to the things and I would hit the Avengers section. I would buy every two dollar book he had, uh, every five dollar book he had, whatever it was, because you know, let's face it, I'm young, I'm minimum wage, I have a lot yeah. of money, but That's I want a lot of it. comics, and yeah. so you you buy, you know, you want a lot of books, so you buy a lot of books. But I'll tell you something, if you're if you're serious about this, save your money, buy the expensive ones first. Yeah. Uh, what I really should have done was bought that Avengers number one back in the day. Uh, my dad would have said, what the heck's the matter with you? You can't spend <laughs> that kind of money. But I should have done it. I should have bought that Avengers number four. Yeah. I so clearly remember being a kid and seeing Avengers number four for $50 and thinking, $50 oh for a God. comic book? That's and he's ridiculous. like, that's the first Captain America. <laughs> Fifty dollars? You got to be kidding me! I wish, I wish to to all things that I had paid that fifty dollars instead of about mm -hmm. twenty five two dollar books, because those two dollar books are still two dollars, but that Avengers number four has skyrocketed. Yeah. It's uh, so, like that. I say, prioritize. Decide what it is that you want to get. Make a move on those keys. Make a move on on your bucket list books, because as he says, the supply only gets more scarce and the yep. prices only go go up. Every single San Diego Comic Con, next week is San Diego Comic Con, every single San Diego Comic Con, uh, the, the back issue market shrinks by some percentage, I don't know, uh, but the quantity of books gets bought up uh, every convention season, and a lot of those books don't get resold. Prices go up every single year. This overstreet changes every single year. Yes, it does. Uh, so like I say, prioritization is super key when you're, when you're talking about the how. Um, so, so there's the budget. You got to decide how much you're willing to to spend in general, and how much you're willing to spend on a on a per book basis. Another thing too is you have to decide what what are you going to collect, because 
you can't find everything. So when you go to the, say when you go to a show and you you have your list, you, you say you have your list. These are the books that you want to collect. Well, there's some books on that list that you're never going to find. <laughs> so you have to be open enough to know that when I go to a show, and we always say this, sometimes you don't know what you're going to get until you get there or until mm -hmm. you see it because you don't know what they're going to have. And then you get there and maybe you don't have this book you're looking for. For, but they have this book over here or this run and so I'll pick that up so a lot of times it's supply sure is, is what you're buying that day sure yeah you know, or maybe you'll find uh, we sometimes we'll find dealers that have really nice books and maybe we'll buy a few maybe things that aren't on our list because those books are nice and we know we don't usually see books that nice and so we'll, we'll, we'll buy books that way so it's mm -hmm. another thing um, that's 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 really true uh, you got to have a little flexibility because Again, it's easy to say. You see Logan, you decide. Hey, I love Wolverine. I want to. I want to own every Wolverine comic. Okay, great. And you can buy quite a few, and then you'll be picking up this run and that run, and, and they'll seem relatively inexpensive. And you'll think, oh, this comic thing is easy. What's the first Wolverine? Well, the first Wolverine is Incredible yeah. Hulk 181. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'd love one of those. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so would everybody else at this convention. Uh, but only three guys got one, and, and he's the lowest price is seven hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. Uh, so so that's and, a good. You know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and and then yes, and then in fact that's a very good point. Is that is that. You know, you can find super beat up books for a lot of money, and you think, "What? Well, I'm not going to pay seven hundred and fifty dollars for a yeah. for a book that's torn like that." Well, then you're not going to have one. Uh, I have a copy of Avengers number one, but I'm not necessarily bragging because if you <laughs> saw my copy, you might not necessarily want that copy. Yeah. But I have one. But you do have uh, one. That's and, the key right and there. So, yeah. like I say, I'm restricted by budget, uh, and 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 grade restricts and budget restricts my grade. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, and so you you have to uh, know what you want. You have to know what it's going to cost you, and you have to be realistic when 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 you're not going to find that book at that right. price. Um, and and that's just how that is. And like I say, in our cases, we have several backup plans. Yes, uh, when do. when yeah. I can't find that book, uh, when then then I can always move on. To you always have those things that you want to find, and you might find them, but then there's those things that you know you find. You see it every show. Yeah, right. so you know you're going to be able to get some of those. So those are the things that you, time you go. But other things you have to kind of decide. When I see them, it's on the wall. Maybe I should buy that because I haven't seen one in a long time. Uh, uh, one of the things I talked about in the podcast once was that uh, DC Comics uh, special series number eighteen, the death of Jonah Hex. I had never seen one, and I saw one in Minnesota in 2000, and it was uh, it was just a little bit. It was probably a, a VG. And it's like a fifty dollar book, and they were charged at fifty, and I don't want to pay fifty dollars for a VG. So I said, I'll just see it some other time. Didn't see that book again until 2000, uh, last year, 2016, when we were at the toy show. And then this guy had a really nice one, so I bought it. I said, it's been that long since I've seen that book again. This time I'm going to buy it. That's <laughs> what so I did. So sometimes you have to know. And sometimes you don't know, sure, because you don't know it's going to take you fifteen more years to get it. We'll, we'll like talk it. a little bit about that when we get to the when. But that's that's really true. Uh, again, when I decided I wanted to complete my Avengers run, and and you know I'd come across ones, and they were like in really nice, you know, high grade and, and high price. And I think, well, I don't necessarily need a, a high grade copy of that book. I'll I'll wait. And I'll find a lower grade and lower price. Uh, but like you say, then you go to the next show and the next show and the next show, and nobody has number yeah. seventy uh, in any kind of grade in any kind of shape. And so when you finally see when you finally see number seventy again, and it's two hundred dollars. Uh, yeah. Sometimes you just got to bite the bullet, and it's and it's crazy, and you kind of wish you hadn't or whatever. Uh, but as time goes on, but then when you get to the next show, and nobody has it again, and the next show, yeah. nobody has. Uh, for me personally, that book was Fantastic Four number fifty-two, uh, the oh, first yeah. appearance of the you Black Panther. For that for a long time. Um, I was looking for that book for a long time, and and would see it, you know, every now and then I'd see a high grade, expensive one, and think, oh, I can't afford that. I'll wait. I'll wait. But then you just don't see them anymore, and yeah. and so I think I ended up paying two fifty, uh, two hundred and fifty dollars, which is a great price for a mid grade copy of that book. But it's a bit above my general budget on a per book right. basis. But I knew I wasn't going to see it, or the next time I saw it, it was going to be three fifty for a lower grade. Um, it always comes down to time. I mean, buying it now, you're going to pay two fifty. If you would have bought it ten years ago, you'd only paid like twenty bucks for that book, right? Because he didn't have his movie back then. 
and all these things. Yeah, all these, and these so, things change these on a dime. Yeah. So all of a sudden, uh, that's Marvel, book. Captain Marvel will be that book next yeah. year. A book yeah. you can find for five dollars forever, and then the hint of the movie comes out. And now it's fifty dollars. Yeah. So to Captain Lee Warlock, right? Because of, uh, yes, what Adam Warlock's yeah. another one. All these early Fantastic Fours that I'm setting in Dubai now. Uh, so I can say just to, to catch up a little bit, that's that's some very important things that you have to decide for yourself and educate yourself on is what you want uh, and and what you're going to pay for it. Uh, you need to understand those grades. You need to understand uh, poor, good, fine, right. near mint. You, you need to at understand least, the 2.0 to 9.4. Yeah, you just need to know what they look like. So when you have it in front of you, you can say to yourself, okay, yeah, that guy is grading good. That is a, yeah, that is a VG. You know, um, you, need, you don't have to be an expert, a grading expert. Nobody's a grading expert. Mark's not. I'm not. None of us are experts. We're just. It's an art. It's not a science. So you just learn over the years uh, what the conditions are. But the grading guide is actually really good about. Sure, quick page here. Um, it's really good about showing you exactly what a book looks like. Mm -hmm. So it tells you what the little flaws, what the little flaws are, and like that. But then it's great. So read the guide and you can get a little more familiar with what types of defects make a book a VG or make a book a very fine. Uh, a near mint book, a near mint book can have tiny, tiny flaws. But in the real world, you know, a near mint book can't have any flaws because you're not going to be able to sell it as a near mint. Right, not uh, in the It has one. any flaws. So there's a little difference between what the book says to what the real world is. Yeah. And and to say again, even if you're a reader, even if you're you know you're not an investor, you're not going to resell this stuff. I would still strongly encourage you to pick up a grading guide, look through the grading guide, uh, know what you can get away with in a in a near mint grade, know what a VG mm -hmm. looks like, uh, and get yourself an overstreet. Even for the hardcore collectors, I say you don't need to get one every year, no. though Marcus does because he loves it. Uh, but but if you've never had one, you need to get one. If you haven't had one for like five years, you need to get one. And again, like the grading guide, you this print is impossibly small. Yeah, but small. this book lists every book ever published in America, uh, and it lists every price for different grades. So you can look up any book you're going to come across, yep. and you're going to look at, and it's going to have different yeah, prices you. for different grades for you. It's a it's an incredibly incredibly useful resource. Not just about pricing; it also tells you the next thing I'm going to get into. Uh, gets you a little blurb of why you should buy that book. Right. Uh, right. This thing is hugely important for looking up. You know, you can look up X Men One Thirty Seven. It says, "Oh, Death of Phoenix," and 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 all those things are important. Not just for the value, but for telling you why you might want to buy one. Right. It's uh, something that you can use to help you find the things that you want to buy. At the bottom of each. Title, like it'll say the, it'll run through all the Batman comics and then at the end it has a little blurb of what artists did what book mm -hmm. so maybe you want to read all the John Byrne I mean buy all the John Byrne books like me and Mark do you can go down to the bottom and it'll tell you exactly what books John Byrne did and exactly what books he drew the cover so now you can go out and buy all those books mm -hmm. so it's good information that way and one of the dangers of it is that it will turn you on to aspects of collecting that you didn't even know existed. Uh, that's that's one of the things that gets me is I'll be look well. Uh, for example, my thing with Tomb of Dracula. You're looking through this and you're going through the Overstreet and then you realize that Gene Colan did every issue of right. Tomb of Dracula. <laughs> yeah. Darn! Now I have to buy oh, every right, issue yeah. of Tomb of Dracula. Uh, so, like I say, it's educational. It's fun. It's all kinds of things. It's not just for the the, the retailer or the, the convention guy or the hardcore collector. Uh, and coincidentally, it comes out next week. So yes. pick one up. One uh, of the things I like to do is I like shop. to buy books before they go up. I like to try to figure out what that book is that's going to be hot, or what's that book that's cheap now that ten years from now is going to be worth more money. Sure. And I kind of look at that as like it's a fun thing to do. I've done it over the years. I've done good at it. I've done bad at it. It's either sure. way. Sure. You know? <laughs> um, but that's that's another that gets to my next question, which is the what. Uh, we've done who, why, how. Uh, next to how. Uh, with the budget and the grades and the whatever, I, I think the the what is is your most important question. And we've answered it a little bit with yeah. you know buy what you like, buy what but what you like right. to read. But more specifically, uh, right off the top, there's there's three things that every vintage collector is looking for. Uh, first and foremost is keys. Um, what is a key? Uh, a key is a book where something important happens. Uh, the first appearance of something, the death of someone. This um, is a key. <laughs> this is X-Men 137 is a key. Uh, one of the, the most important keys of, of the whole run. Um, giant size X-Men number one. Right. Uh, Batman 608. Uh, a key can be just about anything that, that is important for some reason. 
Uh, and as I say to a lot of people, uh, the difference between one issue and the next is all the difference in the world. Uh, Batman 607, uh, sorry to whoever written Drew Batman, I'm just pulling this out of my head. Whoever you are, you have to understand that 607 is not 608. Uh, the difference between Batman 607 and 608 is all the difference in the well, world. That's the collectability of that uh, book. We can tell you who Drew wrote and Drew 608. That's right. I don't but think I got either no one idea. of us can tell you who did 607. Uh, and, and, uh, I do know who did 620. Uh, Azarello took yeah, over. Yeah, right? and Lisa but, but And that was a great run, but even at that, the difference yeah. between Batman 619 and 620 is all the difference in the world. Yeah. Why? Because 619 is a key. Uh, and and 620 is not so much so. So understanding what your keys are is super important. Um, the next thing is runs. Uh, what is a run? A run okay. is a title. A run is a chunk of consecutive issues. A run can be a lot of things, but but mostly it's a group of consecutive issues of the same title. Uh, I like I said, I set out to get the entire run of the Avengers which means I bought Avengers number one up to the current issue. It took me 40 years. Uh, <laughs> other things, like you can say I want the John Byrne run on, on X-Men. You can right. say I want the George Perez run of Wonder Woman. Uh, it can be even shorter than that. You know, a mm -hmm. run can be six issues or something. But, but again, keys are individual issues. Runs are groups right. of issues. And you might even want to do, like, arcs. Say you just want sure. to read, like, if it's, uh, like, these superheroes, you want to read the Great Darkness saga. Mm -hmm. It's only five issues. So you might just, you don't want to collect the whole title, but you do want to read those five issues, and so you can just collect those. Yeah, you know? and and again, it's it's as a way of prioritizing, as a way of, of knowing what you're looking for, how to do a little research for what you're looking mm -hmm. for, because obviously, uh, as we say. If if you just want to read some Batman books, you can you can read some Batman books. You can pick up some old comics or trades or what have you. Uh, but if you want keys and you want particular runs and you want special things, you're going to have to be prepared to pay for them. Right. Uh, and so again, you're going to need to know what you're looking for, uh, so that you can look into the other things. How much it's going to cost you? Right. How you're going to pay? How for much it, is it worth? All those what, kind of things. Know, what are you willing to pay um, for? It? So, like I said, the first thing is, of course, your favorites. I love Superman, so I'm going to go buy Superman. Okay, great. That's easy. Uh, then as you get into that, then you get into keys and runs. And I'm trying to think if there's another kind of, uh, well, I guess by creator, of course. Uh, the last well, I'll one I'll tell you a is, couple that I have. One of them is I collect all uh, covers of Lois Lane in a wedding, uh, a wedding dress. Because one day I was going through my books was when I was pricing for a show. And I was like, damn, there are a lot of books with Lois Lane in a wedding dress. And after a while, I started to see so many of them. I said, I'm going to collect these things. And another one is, is I collect any comic book that has the word slaughter on the cover. <laughs> <laughs> um, Again, because I was priced one day, I noticed, oh, slaughter. And then I, you know, maybe an hour later, oh, slaughter, cool. <laughs> well, <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm glad that. you brought that up because that's another thing. This is a little more into the into the newbies, but but if you're just getting into collecting vintage books, that's one of the things that will happen to you. Uh, that's one of those warnings from the you in the mm -hmm. future. Uh, as I say, you start these things be for keys, for runs, for your favorite things, for your favorite writer, for your favorite artist. But but then you get the the comic sickness. And you start collecting. <laughs> I wish I had X Men one thirty six. I wish I had the one before this handy because it's a famous cover of, of Cyclops holding the body right. And, and that's another one. There's yeah. there's all kinds of covers. Yeah. Which crisis is it? Where he's got Supergirl. A uh, seven. Uh, we were just crisis we were going Earth. through. Uh, Jim's books. Yes. Last week we, we saw two homages and that's right there. So <laughs> if you're familiar with X-Men 136 or with Crisis on Infinite Earths uh, there, or a thousand other covers where your hero is holding the dead body of some other hero. The and first one I remember crying. was Odin holding Thor. And one of those old uh, Journey into Mystery, I think. Um, that was the oldest one that I can remember. I thought years and years ago when I first bought the store, I was under the impression that, that Crisis was that cover and that people would homage Crisis. Well, I was wrong because somebody brought in a binder uh, to my store one night and she had a whole binder that he showed me of all these comics with that cover. That pose, and they yeah. went way back. He had westerns. He had old 50s westerns that, that had that. And I realized, of course, that Perez had, was uh, that, that Crisis right. cover was an homage to all of these great things. So my point being, that guy with that binder had descended into collecting only comics that had that yeah, cover, that, that had that thing. That's great. Uh, I met a guy, uh, there's there's a very, very brief point in Marvel history where comics had two cover prices, where some books have a right, 30 yeah. cent 
and a 35 cent cover price. Um, and if you have the 30 cent version, it's worth way more than the 35 cent version because because the print run and blah blah blah. So I've met people who only collect those 30 cent Marvel books. Uh, I've got a friend, Kevin. Hello, Kevin, if you're watching. He only collects Amazing Spider-Man. His ears must burn all the time because I talk about him all the time here in the store. Because I have over a hundred long boxes of books. I have I have way way too many comic books. My friend Kevin has one run of Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, well, you're like this, Chris. Uh, and and my friend Kevin, his whole his his one run, his collection of, of comics is probably three long boxes, and it's worth more than than my hundred long boxes of stuff, and my complete run of Avengers, and then all my stuff. Why? Uh, because all my stuff is trash reader copies, uh, like we're talking about. Because I bought ones I could afford to fill my run. Whereas Kevin is smart, and he saves up, and he buys that one that one a nice one, near yeah. mint yeah. one uh, because he buys what he likes and and he collects what he likes and that's all he collects and and again that's that's what what we're here to encourage you guys to do and, and here to help you do um, that's one of the things I was thinking about <laughs> switching to is just uh, starting to buy that one or two expensive books and then you know get my cheap ones instead of the way we do it now we go there and see What's the best bang we can get for our, you know? You and I aren't capable of going to a convention and leaving with one book. Yeah, I don't that's think just, so. I've seen, I've seen that Chris do it once. Yeah, that, Marcus it, do it. it requires. Steve's anything. done it. I couldn't do it. I, I can't. You and I. That's why I, I mentioned <laughs> us specifically. I just, I've seen people do that, but we don't have the self restraint. When Steve um, told us, so uh, he, he went to show with me and. Uh, he told us, I times you guys, it took you 40 minutes to go through one box. And I thought, ah, you guys right. That's terrible. That's that's it. Um, but we'll get to that when, when we get to the where, because I, I think, well, I guess we're almost yeah. there now. So we're, we're getting to the, okay, so when? Um, when do you buy comics? When do I buy vintage comics specifically? Well, there's, there's three sort of answers. The one answer is anytime, uh, meaning uh, most comic shops, the vast majority of the comic shops, Jobs, have an old comic section. Um, some more than others, of course. Uh, I'm always the first to admit, here at Black Cat, we're mostly new comics, subscriptions, trades, things like that. Uh, I go to the conventions, I buy a, a couple hundred old books, I put them up on the wall. I sell what we were talking about, keys and, and very specific things. Um, but lots of shops have huge, uh, run very, very deep in old books. Um, and, and in every region of the country, there's there's different kinds of shops. You'll find that new shop, the trade shop, the indie shop, yeah. the mm -hmm. old comic shop. Uh, so so when do I buy vintage comics? Find the, the shop by you uh, that runs really deep. Well, go them all, of course, because we all have different stuff. Uh, but you'll find that shop that specializes in that sort of thing. And if you prefer the old comics to the new comics, uh, then, then you'll find that shop that does that. Here in the South Bay, I always love to talk about my man, Alan. Uh, over at Heroes, uh, Heroes in Campbell is a great shop for old books. Very good selection. Uh, and he has um, uh, good prices. He has great prices. That's, that's a big exceptionally key. knowledgeable. Uh, I can't recommend him enough for, for the old books. But like I say, get around to, to every shop because you'll have them. So you can do that anytime. Uh, and, and again, the online thing is a little different. I'll get to that in a little bit. But uh, you can you can buy sh old books anytime at your local shop. But more specifically, one thing I like to recommend to folks is getting out to those conventions. Um, get out to your to your local show, no matter where you are in the country. There's a local comic convention coming to you. Um, if there isn't the closest large city to you has a large yeah. convention sometime There's during one the year, in the vicinity somewhere. Uh, there is one yeah. in your state somewhere. Uh, if there isn't. Save a little money, uh, get yourself out to one of the bigger shows. Uh, people can't get into San Diego anymore, but you can get out to WonderCon in Anaheim, you can do Denver, you can do Pittsburgh. Uh, there is a big city in your region uh, that you can take a bus to, take a plane to, uh, whatever you did that have you. You went to Emerald City. I, I get around to, to at least all the West Coast shows. Um, and there's a thousand reasons for it, and conventions is its own thing, but sticking to vintage comics. Uh, you want to get out there because every convention is going to have different vendors uh, right. and they're going to have 
half price vintage books that are kind of beat up but affordable. Uh, there's going to be books with nothing but pristine, high grade, graded books that are a lot of money. Um, but but you're going to get out to a show and you're going to be able to find uh, five different versions of X Men 37. <laughs> this guy's going to yep. have a beat up one for ten bucks. This guy's going to have a super nice one for a hundred bucks. Which one's the one for you? And obviously, when you when you go to the shops in your area, they're only going to be finite. They're going to have X number of books, and they're only going to have what they have, and that's going to be that. Um, but uh, but at a convention, like I say, there's going to be a lot of vendors. There's going to be a lot of different books to choose from. You're going to be able to pick and choose your grade, pick and choose your price. So again, if you're if you're getting into the vintage comics, or if you love the vintage comics, or if you aren't in and and, and but you want to see what it's all about. I really, really recommend to, to get now to a to a convention, to as many conventions as you can get to. And and as a secondary, and, and Marcus and I do this, my man Anthony's really good at this. Much like your favorite comic shop, and every shop is different, but you'll find the shop that's right for you. When you go to a convention, you'll find the seller that's right for you. Uh, there will be all these different vendors, but as you go to the same show year after year or quarterly or whatever they are, you'll meet Bob, and Bob will be really cool and have good prices, and, and you'll like to buy from Bob, and Bob will give you a special deal because you buy from him all the time. And 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 trust and rapport is, like anything, is, is, is really great. And buying really comics, it's, it's it's, if you're really serious about it, it's a big key. One of the things we like to do is we like to go to shows. We like to go to different shows. We like to go to the toy show because it's a select group of dealers that we deal with all the time. But then we like to go to Silicon Valley, uh, this, yeah, Silicon Valley Comic Con because it's different vendors than we generally get. You know, So we can get different books that we won't see at the toy show. We'll see there. Mm -hmm. And then you'll get to know these dealers. They'll get to know you. Chris had mentioned when we went to the toy show, my friend Harvey was there. And he hadn't been to Toy Show, you know, and I came around the corner and I saw his booth and I was like, oh my goodness, you know, and then he saw me and, you know, oh, he knew he was going to make a sale. <laughs> I'm sure he did because I knew right away, oh, this guy's got good stuff. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to go through his stuff. I know I'm going to find a few things that I can buy mm -hmm. just because I, you know, I, I bought from him before. So I knew, you know. Uh, like I say, me and Anthony, we've had good relationships with a couple of the dealers at uh, the toy show, and they'll call us. They'll save books for us. They'll, uh, they'll, uh, they won't even, you know, we won't even think of it. But when we get to the show, they've got books that they put aside for us. Hey, I, right. I thought about you when I got this, and I held it until I, uh, you know, to the show, and I'm going to show it to you now. So you get guys that'll do that for you. Yeah. Or if you let, uh, like uh, Anthony had this guy know what he was looking for, so he went out and looked for those things for him. So now when we when we meet up with him, he'll have some of those comics that are on his list. So that's always a good thing too. A sure. lot of dealers are willing to take your list. Sure. And look for your books for you. Sure. You need to find if you're really serious and you got those holes in your run that you want to fill, you need to find dealers that'll do that for you. Sure. When I off the top of my head, one of the one of the real key things, and I, I mentioned now and I should mention Steve Wyatt. Um, because I buy mm -hmm. boy, do I buy a ton of books from Steve. Books. Every uh, time we see Steve, yeah. Every time I see him. Uh, Steve uh, does Silicon Valley Comic Con and a thousand other shows. He's he's one is of the that, greatest uh, San greatest guys. South San Francisco, yep, too, San Francisco yeah. Comic Con, East Bay Comic Con. Steve's one of the best guys, one of the most popular guys in the business, uh, and and one of the the biggest biggest things uh, with Steve is that I know what I'm getting. Um, not yes. only does he do all the things you mentioned, he knows what I like, he knows uh, what he can take my money for, uh, which is great, but I know that when I buy a book from Steve, the Marvel date stamp's not going to be cut out of it, uh, yeah. and if the date stamp is cut out of it, he's going to know and he's going to tell yeah. me, mm -hmm. um, and we all know that in any industry there's less than scrupulous folks. Yeah. To say nothing about less than scrupulous, I mean, uh, you know, I sell comics, I, I like to think that I pre-grade everything I sell and I go through everything, but, but mistakes happen, people are people, okay. whatever it I've might be, things and, and, and I don't want to sell a book that has a big purple stain in the middle yeah. as a high-grade book. Um, and, and when I buy books from Steve, I know he's graded them fairly, priced them fairly, graded them thoroughly, graded them fairly, priced them fairly, and I'm confident when I resell a book from Steve uh, that, that they're buying a quality book. So you've bought books from him before, so you know his grading is good. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to, with a guy like that, a guy that we've bought from for years, I've even buy it from 
see it for 15, maybe 20 years, whatever. So we know that this guy's got good grading. We don't have to question that. We can look at the book. We don't have to question the grade because we know Steve and we know his grading is good. So that, as far as for us, that's on the table. Now I can go look at other things, you know. Sure. I can find this book. One thing I like about Steve, too, is that he has a wide variety of things. He has gold key books. He's got Harvey books. He's got Marvel magazines. He's got everything. So if you're looking for that weird book, like Steve was looking for mm -hmm. uh, Marvel Preview, the Punisher origin issue, right? Steve had that. I was looking for uh, uh, D D Dracula, Neil Adams uh, magazine. He had that. And he mm -hmm. has these things that other dealers don't have. And I guarantee you he'll have them at a good price too. And another thing about Steve is, is – if you don't think it's a good price, you can ask him, and he'll 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 deal with. They'll you, work with you. Know? you. Yeah, that's uh, and like I say, those kind of relationships, those kind of reports are great. And you you can build them at conventions. Obviously, you can build them with your with your local comic book guy, um, and and shops that you frequent. And it's things. a good thing to do, you know, for number one, for being able to find um, more things. But number two, it's monetarily you get to know these guys. Though they're going to give you discounts. These guys always give us discounts. They always. Give all all three of us, all four of us, they give us discounts because they know that we bought from them before and we'll buy from them again. So they're going to give us a nice discount to make sure that we do come back sure. to the next year. We go to their table first before we right. spend all our yeah, money. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I guess so. Yeah. It's, again, as far as the when card, there's there's you know at your today at your local shop. Right. Uh, there's at your next convention and and find all those conventions. Uh, and then the third part of that, the third answer to that is right now. Uh, right. as, as we said before, the, the prices are only going up. I have never, and I, I think I can say that as a fact, I've, I've never really seen books drop. Not noticeably. Uh, one of my favorite examples, when I, when I was a kid, uh, Punisher number one, which is in his first appearance, we all know, it was the first issue of, of his mini, his first you know, book in his own title. Boy, was that book smoking hot. Right. That book came out, I think cover price was probably 75 cents back then. And and that book was $20 immediately. Like like the minute it came out, you yeah. everybody, you saw the book around for 20 bucks. And 20 bucks was a fortune back then. that was then. a really high book. It was a book. fortune really back book. then. You could, you could buy a lot of nice, key, high-grade old books back mm -hmm. then for 20 bucks. Uh, and so to get 20 bucks for a brand new Punisher book was a little bit outrageous, but that price held for the longest time. Okay. And I'll tell you something funny: that book is still 20 bucks. Oh, sure. Uh, well, now it's it's and, even worth more. I mean, it's like probably 50 well, well, because it is worth I've that seen now. I've it. Yeah, but, now but it is worth it, that. It's held, and it's it's one of those. It's things. a 30 some year old um, book now. So and, yeah. And there's a lot of things like that 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 like say you very few things drop significantly. Well, as you know, I I follow the Dolce guy. You know, uh, I follow it every year, so I know there are things that go down. But a lot of those things that have gone down over the years, I've seen them come back. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Harbinger Dark Knight, number one. Yeah, Harbinger number one is a perfect example. Um, it started out as just a, a, a book in the guy for you get it for regular price. The next year, one year later, it was worth a hundred dollars because it was like a low print run. It was a low print run. You couldn't find that book, and then. Three years after that, it was a five dollar book because everybody realized it's really it's not worth that plummeted. money. Yeah, and they weren't you know they weren't making books anymore. But then, twenty years later, the book goes from five to eight to ten to twelve to twenty. Now in two thousand seventeen, it's a hundred dollar book again. <laughs> All positive. So you can see certain things come back. I was going to mention uh, Dark Knight was one of those. Mm -hmm. When Dark Knight first came out, Dark Knight was a hot book, and it went straight from whatever cover price was, three, four bucks, to like 20, 30, 50 bucks. But that one dropped down, dropped down to 20 and stayed at 20 for the longest of times. Um, but then I say 10 years ago, it started to, again, eat back up. You know, people really realize this is, it's a key. It's Miller's, you know, first huge story. And now it's back up to over 55. I think it's a $100 book now. I wanted to look up Harvard just to see, but I'm almost positive that that's a twenty dollars book now. But which for me is amazing because there are certain things I, I consider myself very knowledgeable. There are certain things I think won't come back, and that's one of those things I did not think was going to come back. I didn't think it'd yeah. come back to that extent. I knew ride number zero would. Yeah, number I one. Told yeah, number one is now worth a hundred dollars. There you yeah. go. And, and number and the zero issue is fifty five too. So even a zero is done. And it gets back to something I said for the longest time about a lot of things, but since we're talking about Valiant, that's a good example. 
Uh, I told everyone I bought the store in the early 2000s, you know, Valiant was deader than dead and 90s comics were deader than dead and everybody made fun of everything and, and, and stores were dumping all that stuff for a quarter apiece. Yeah. Buddy, uh, keep your early Valiant stuff, keep your Rise, keep uh, your early Magnus, whatever, all that stuff's going to come back. So, uh, Walt Simonson, so Frank are, Miller, yeah. Jim Shooter, all these guys, Bob, that's, Layton. Bob Layton, that's great comics that in good material will always hold value. Uh, and I was right that 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 stuff came back. That's um, why buying books came back because the quality. Of because the quality. See, of we, the we, were, we, we were reading books back then in the uh, '90s when Valiant and Image started, and I was high on Valiant. I was high on Image, but a year later, after I read all this stuff, I knew that the Valiant books were good. They were good, good stories. Good art versus the Image books. There were two or three that were good, but on a whole, they were just pretty, right. but you pretty knew books to look Brigade at. Brigade was not going to right. be exactly. a tearing the mm -hmm. overstreet. Whereas impact. you read the first twelve issues of Solar yeah. or, or Magnus, and and you get to yeah. you, it's, it's this great story that brings you all the way up to. When Turai, you know, came. Yeah. I mean, so you're like, that was a good story. It didn't have anything to do with the art or whatever. So, based on that, you have to figure that 20 years down the line, that book is going to be sure. worth something because the demand of quality stuff, quality stuff will always yep. be worth something. And that's another reason why I always say, buy what you like. If you buy what you like, you will always have a collection that is you valuable know, to if you. If you buy what you like, and if you buy what you like to read, you're gonna have a valuable collection because it just happens that way. Yeah. Because the good stuff that's out there generally is worth is worth more money. Uh, there's a lot of things that are great reads that aren't worth anything too, and those are the ones you gotta get out there and buy. You uh, gotta get out there now. Uh, John Burns run on uh, Fantastic Four. Yes. Not most one of those. Comics. I don't think any any of those books is more than six dollars in the guide. There might be a ten dollar one, but every single one of those issues is worth reading because yep. they're great stories. So that's one that you can go get. You can get it cheap. It's going to look good, and you're going to read the story, and you're going to be, oh, that is a great story. Jim Balin, Catwoman, I think is another one like that. That's another one, um, and you know, and you could find those in dollar boxes. Yeah. You know, you can find those things in dollar boxes, and the story's better. But you know what? What's in dollar boxes now aren't going to be in dollar boxes ten years down the line. A that's, perfect that's example exactly what we're talking about. is Rocket Raccoon. Yeah. I always wanted Rocket Raccoon. But I didn't buy it because I, I go through quarter boxes and dollar boxes all the time, and all I saw was Rocket Raccoon. So why did I need to buy it? Whenever I decided to pull the trigger, I could go to anybody's quarter box and buy sure. rack, Rocket Raccoon. Well, all of a sudden, here comes this movie. Yeah. <laughs> and Rocket Raccoon book. is worth 100 it's, Yeah, it's a $100 book now, which I did buy it. I left up on it. Um, but it wasn't like all these years. I could have bought it for $0.25. Cents. I could have bought multiple copies. Yeah. And I never did. Another example, Star Wars number 42. Yes. The first appearance of Boba Fett. I always liked that story because that's within the run of uh, Empire Strikes Back. And the adaption is really good. It's worth reading. If you can find that, I suggest that you read it. Go. That's something vintage book to go collect. Yes. It's great reading. But you could buy that anywhere. It wasn't worth anything. Then all of a sudden, Boba Fett became this huge popular character. Now that's a $100 book. Yeah. I found that because I went to get the run. And I bought all the issues except one, and I was like, number, number 42, 42 not here. Yeah. And, you know, and I was like, oh, I don't remember. So I looked in my trusty guide, and I went, oh, that's why. <laughs> and I realized I just bought the issues to read. I wasn't ever going to get it now. But luckily, I did buy I bought it off of eBay, too, which is another thing. I bought that book on eBay. You can buy books online, too, but it's it's – Buying books online are a whole different thing. But I left up, got a really nice copy, and now I have that run. There you, you know, go. So. Which gets me to the where, the last part of this little shindig. Uh, who, what, where, when, why, and how. And, and the where is, and we've said a little bit about it, uh, your local comic shop. Always, always start with your local comic shop. And maybe I'm not your local comic shop, and that's fine. But wherever your, your shop is, start with the closest comic shop to you. I always say that. Uh, and if you're in a certain areas, like like in San Jose, or even up in uh, Sacramento, I live there. There's more than one store that you can go to. Sure. So you'll find your store. Like you'll find your store where you buy your new comics, and you'll have your store where you buy your older comics, and maybe you have your store where you get your supplies. It, it's just there's there's so many stores out there, but you want to look at all of them. 
like if you're looking for a certain issue, maybe you're reading a uh, detective and you you find out you don't have issue 340 and you want to read because you got 341, you want to read it. And like, well, you know what? There's three stores I can go to maybe today. Maybe one of those will have it. So I can hit those three stores in my neighborhood and maybe one of them will have it. Maybe one of them won't, but I will at least have three stores I can go to that I can try to find it. And then maybe if I get lucky, I can get it and go home and read that. Yeah. You know? If not, then maybe I have to buy it on, online. You know, yeah. so. <laughs> so around here, here in the South Bay, uh, of course, Black Cat Comics, Rockin' Mill Peters. Yeah. Uh, and I he mentioned... does have good vintage books on the wall. Don't listen to him. He has very good vintage books. I buy them all the time. Um, so does Chris. <laughs> and, uh, and we'll have even more when we get back a couple weeks from San Diego. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I like to mention uh, Heroes over in Campbell. Right. I like to mention Atlanta's Fantasy World in Santa yes. Cruz. There's a thousand reasons to go to Santa um, Cruz because it's one of the best places in the world, but Atlantis is one of them. It's just a very cool place to visit. Because yes. it's been in a while. While you're there, uh, <laughs> go to Atlantis. Joe's been there for forever and ever. He's and if Joe's there, there, it's just cool to meet him. I only met him a few times. Um, once when I went to the store and then I met him, he was here once or uh -huh. yeah, and I, I met him here. Uh, but he's just a great guy. He's a really great guy. And then uh, uh, of course, when we talked about conventions, um, I, in our area we have Silicon Valley Comic Con, which I like mm -hmm. a lot. Um, we have East Bay Comic Con, which I like. San Francisco yeah. Comic Con. Uh, but again, your local town uh, is going to have something. The the biggest city near you is going to have something. Uh, get out to the shows. Get yeah, out those to the big, big ones. Like the big regional. Get towns, out like to right. New York Con, Baltimore Con, uh, Charlotte, C two E two, right? Yeah. Chicago. Sure. Um, they had heroes and villains. Heroes they and like villains. Tour exactly, that. Yes. Um. um and then uh, Emerald City. Uh, Emerald that's City so these shows, I, I, call them regional, show. I call them regional shows because yeah. they're huge shows. So if you're in that, if you're that in two the West, to three state region, you right. can go to that show. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, let's say New York, Denver, Seattle, every every major city has a great show. And, and to close out, just online, online is really tricky. Uh, and I, I don't like to say no. I don't like to be biased. People yeah. always accuse me of being a store guy uh, and, 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 and all that. And that's not true. I buy online just like anybody else does. I'll tell you the two things. One, as we all know, is you don't know what you get. Uh, right. and, and when you do know what you're getting, when you're talking about graded books, you can pay too much. So like stores, like the booths at the, at the conventions, I say the same thing about online. Mm -hmm. Buy from different guys. Find a guy you like and that you trust, uh, that you can have a little rapport with, and then buy from that person. Um, I do not like eBay for a hundred reasons, um, all of which I've just discussed. Because sometimes, quite frankly, even when you meet a guy and you get a rapport, that rapport doesn't necessarily work out for the long. And again, I'm not saying there aren't great vendors on eBay. There's it lots of guys, on the vendor. but you got to build that relationship and you got to buy from people. Mm -hmm. um, so, so like I say, shop around. Find a person you like. Uh, don't overpay. All those things. Uh, buying online can be really dangerous. So do your homework. Three that I I really like. Uh, I like Midtown Comics. Number one, when I have to buy online, I buy from Midtown. Uh, first and foremost, his his selection is great. His pricing is great, and he lets you buy different books in different grades. Um, I like the beat up ones. I buy beat up ones for me. I buy the nice ones for the <laughs> store, uh, and I can totally do that at Midtown. Um, the next one I like is Lone Star. Uh, Lone Star is a guy out of Texas. Uh, what makes Lone Star great is that he's got dozens of brick and mortar stores. Uh, so if you're a person who likes to support comic shops, you can still buy from Lone Star because he's a comic shop. Uh, and, and, and again, he's got great selection, great prices. Um, and and, and it's, he's fair. His stuff, you, you buy, you know what you're getting. Uh, when you get from Lone Star, the grades are good. Um, the grades are good. The last yeah. thing I say is Mile High Comics, and and I Chuck Brzezinski right. has Again, been his, his part of too. this industry forever, um, and Chuck has everything ever. I, I will say, uh, you can pay too much, uh, but he he'll email you out lots of, of discount codes if you get on his email yeah. newsletter thing. Um, I, I, I dare say I do put him third on that list, but, but he is a really great 
uh, online vendor. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, there's lots and lots of them, but, but those are three of the biggest. Those are three there's guys that Marcus, I use a lot. One me and Marcus found, I think it's called Steve's Comics or something like that. And Marcus had found it. So what we did is we w went to his site. We picked out a couple of books, a couple of finds, a couple of VGs that were cheap, and we bought them. And that we, we wanted to see what the grades looked like. So when we got the comics, we looked at the grades. We liked the grades, so we went ahead and bought more. And we got the comics back again. We liked the grades, so we went and bought a few more. You know, a little there more expensive things. Sure. So that's how we did it with that. You know, that's just the printer we didn't know anything about. But we saw he had some books because, in this case, Marcus was looking for some Western books, and this guy had specialized in some Western books, and so that's why he picked this guy. So we bought some books from him, and now you know that's where he bought a few of the Western tiles that he was looking for. You know, so. and yeah, so I say eBay I, is good too. Again, you have to you have to know what you're looking for. You have to be able to buy on eBay. Uh, you have to know that you got to look at a guy's feedback. You have to check things. Uh, you know, how, is he a reputable dealer or not? Is he a uh, uh, preferred is a preferred dealer is he not a preferred dealer does he have a lot of feedback is it negative feedback is it positive feedback the biggest thing when buying books online is what is a return policy that's the first thing you look at because even if they even have a return policy they're probably going to be pretty good so if they even have it because guys that aren't good they're not going to have a return policy because they don't care right you know so that's a that's a big thing but the best thing to do would be buy a couple like I said buy a couple smaller ones cheaper ones See what the grade is, and if you like it, then go ahead and buy that expensive book. You know, I bought a couple of expensive books online from dealers that I didn't know, but um, they had good reputations on eBay. So I was, I went ahead and I bought my um, Batman two fifty one, the Joker issue, from a guy on eBay. But we worked a deal, a trade, you know, a trade deal, which was really nice because he he saw my store, I saw his store, and then I was buying the book, and he said. He asked me if we want if I wanted to do a, a trade thing. And I was like, yeah, because he had looked at some of the X Men books I had on my store, and he said, well, I wouldn't mind getting those X Men. And, and I said, well, I want that two fifty one. Well, what can we do? And then he came back with the deal. I said, that sounds great to me, and we did it. So there those things go. have to work out like that too sometimes. It's also fun. Trading has been part of comics trading, from trading. day one. When you were a kid, I mean, well, me and Mark are really ancient, or I'm ancient. He's not as old as I am. I'm a little less ancient. <laughs> but what we did in those days is that's what we did. Um, uh, I read uh, DC. My friend across the street, he was a Marvel guy. He read Avengers. He read Iron Man. Uh, my little brother was a Spider-Man guy. My other brother was a, a Captain America guy. And then the kid down the street was a, a, a Superman guy. So we would all just trade books back and forth by each other. So that way, we were able to read all these things, but we didn't have to buy them. Yeah. We were able to read, you know. So uh, you don't do it as much now, but we're going to do it uh, tomorrow at the swap meet. <laughs> yes, tomorrow at the swap meet. That's a great place for vintage books. Come on out yes, to we're uh, have really good day five books. of the Black yeah. Cat Comics, Rock and Mill, Peter's Pre Comic. I know. I just moved 40 boxes of them this morning. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I don't think we've got any questions. I've been looking for questions from the, uh, from the audience. I don't think anybody's sent any, so maybe we've uh, brilliantly answered everyone's <laughs> questions. Uh, questions from the audience, yes. yes. How do you prioritize your list? Uh, Chris wants to know how we prioritize our list. Um, good question. That is a good question. By desire and availability uh, is, is one I have control over and one I have no control over, uh, like he said earlier. So I prioritize my list by um, by desire. Like I say, I like right now at the top of my list is Fantastic Four. Is is the remaining issues I have a Fantastic Four. Um, it's not going to be like any method of collecting everybody's thing is going to be a little different i prioritize one title at a time right and and my list is written out that way some guys are collecting 50 titles right now and and so that's that's how it is but like i say first is is by desire what you control i want fantastic four what i can't control is availability right uh every ff i need is below number 50. Uh, it's gonna cost you. <laughs> those are all key and they're all expensive. So two things are going to happen when I go to a show or go to a shop. They're either not going to have one I need, which right. is very possible. I can walk a whole show and no one will have any Fantastic Fours under, under number 50. 
or uh, the only one they have is say number five and it's a thousand dollars so either they don't have one I need or the only ones they have are, are out of my price range so now what I do well now I got to pick a different title oh well I could go home and cry <laughs> uh, but but since I'm a comic addict, I just pick the next title. The next title on my list is the next run that I want to complete uh, for me right now. That's Marvel Two and One because it's a thing book. Therefore, it's a Fantastic Four mm -hmm. book. So if they don't have any Fantastic Fours I need or can afford, then I go down to my next title and I I choose from there. Um, That's what I do. I just make my list uh, pretty broad, all the things that I want. And then when you go to these dealers, you kind of look through what they have, and if they have something that's on your list and you pull your list out and you look and see okay he's got a tumor dracula's always one that that's one of mine i'm looking for now um so i always put my list out oh these are what i need and this is what he's got and i can find things but then again like a tumor Drax is a perfect example of a title where you get a lot of them but there's one key book in that run uh in, in the case of tumor Drax number 10 for spirits and blade that's a 500 dollars thousand dollar book so you'll get everything around that except that one because you're going to have to either find a low-grade book that you can afford or you can save up your money and then buy it. <laughs> yep. So it's, it's usually budget and availability right. are, are kind of the two and Sometimes availability overrides the budget because, again, you see that book um, that you never see. And you have to say to yourself, you know what? I got to bite the bullet. I got to buy that book. We were at the uh, first time we went to Silicon Valley Comic Con. We were dealing with the guys at Treasure Island, another good store for back issues mm -hmm. uh, in uh, Fremont. In Fremont, uh, and we're going through his boxes and going through the Batman's. He's got the Texas Comics number four hundred. Uh, first appearance of Man Bat by Neil Adams and Frank Robbins. So I want that book because the one I have is like a BG. This one's like a fine. So I didn't even hesitate. I just grabbed it and put it put it in my stack. It was 120 bucks, I think. And I was like, I'll just talk to him when I, you know, when I'm ready to pay. I'll see if I can get him to come down or see if he'll take a credit card. <laughs> one of the two. And so I got him to give it to me for like 100 bucks or so, which was a good deal because it's a great book. You know, so a lot of times availability trumps budget. You, if that's sure. that book that you know you're not going to find, or if that's that book that um, you only see one of them at the show, you might want to just bite the bullet, you know, sometimes uh, and buy that book. A lot of times I've done it and I've been happy. A lot of times, I'll, more than not, I haven't done it and I've been upset about it because I have, like I said earlier, I have not found that book again. Yep. Or when I did find it, it was astronomically overpriced, or I waited too long, and now it's overpriced. So sometimes you have to know when to pull the trigger. I regret not buying a book way, way more often than I've regretted buying a book. And maybe you know, from a guy like me, that 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 makes sense. But but I'll say I've I've almost never uh, felt like I overpaid for something or or regretted regretted buying but like I said I've done it from time to time anybody that buys the volume I do is, is, <laughs> is that's gonna happen from time to time um, but but like I say there are infinitely more examples of me walking away from a book and and the next day thinking yeah. to myself oh I should have yeah. got that and I'll save something uh, as horribly sexist as this may seem for for all the wives and girlfriends and significant others and and people who don't understand the comic book person in their life uh, my wife does more on that side of it. She helps me err on not walking away from things. <laughs> of course, like anybody in the beginning, she'd be like, you really don't need another comic book. But, but after a while, she came to understand what we're talking about, that sometimes when you walk away from something, you don't see that book again. Or the next time you see it, it's 100 bucks more and in a lower condition. Yeah. Uh, so, so like I say, there have been many times when she has said, you know, you better get that now because you're not going to see it again. And I give her some comic book expert spiel, oh, this and that and the other thing. And she says, "Do get the book," um, because, like you say, sometimes you just have to. Yeah, you might not find that book again. So, you, like I say, you never know. Um, and the last thing I would say, only because we haven't mentioned it, is store your stuff. Uh, bags, boards, boxes, all that good stuff. It's important. Uh, don't pay a lot of money for high grade books and then damage them. Um, and and reverse, if, if you're like me and you buy low grade, beat up books. Uh, you don't want them getting any worse. 
Uh, <laughs> right. I want to see this. You it's can. True. I, I buy a lot you, of things. If you buy a book in that condition, you want it to at least stay you, in that you condition. Need it. I buy a lot of things that are that are low grade because you know if you want Avengers number three, number five, uh, you're you're gonna you're gonna buy beat up ones, and those books are gonna be old and crispy. Uh, the covers tatter and different mm -hmm. things, and so like I say, get me. Yeah, I always like boards. to change my bags and boards. Yeah, I buy. So right, like right now, I have Anthony at the counter making Silver Age bags. Bags of boards for me, so I can go back and, and hey, go he home. does more for you. <laughs> <laughs> so I can go home and put some of these. Um, some of the what I like to do is books that are nice. If I have a book that's very fine or very fine mint now, I want it to stay that way. Yeah. So even though it sure. might only be worth twenty dollars or ten dollars, it's not really worth that much, but it's in good shape. So automatically. So by being in a near mint, it's already worth more than what the guide says because the yeah. guide only goes up to near mint minus. So I already know that my book is worth more. So I want to stay that way. So I'll buy so, a nice bag of board and put it in there. Whatever it is, the, why, why ever you bought it, you want to keep it in the shape that you bought yeah. it. So so use your bags of boards. And I, like I said in the previous panel, oh, I don't care. I just read them. I'm not a collector. I'm not going to resell them. None of that matters. Spend the 15 cents, 20 cents, get yourself a bag of board and, and, and take care of your stuff. Uh, so I think that about covers all our little tidbits so. for collecting. It's a lot of information. Comics. It's a <laughs> lot of in information, uh, but it's here uh, for eternity and posterity for, for people <laughs> yeah. to rewatch at their leisure. Uh, so get out to your shops, get out to your conventions, check out those vintage books. Um, just buy one, and and then you'll be sucked in, and and, yeah, and like, that's all like it takes. Uh, <laughs> buy one and read it, and, and read then you'll it. be sucked yes. in. Yeah. Um, read everything you buy. That's that's why we get them. Uh, so thanks for tuning in. Uh, we hope you learned something. We hope you had a little fun. Um, we hope you can make use of that info. Uh, you can join us in a couple hours. Uh, our third panel for the day will be uh, superheroes unleashed. Uh, society and its need to be saved. Um, <laughs> that's our what three or five o'clock. Uh, so you can join us back. And then tomorrow is the last day, day five of the pre Comic Con Comic Con. We've got the big swap meet and we have our back issue sale. All the uh, back issues are seventy five percent off. So make sure you get in and take advantage of that. All right. Come on down and buy some old comics. That's it. <laughs> um, and you can find Marcus and I uh, with Chris here. Uh, every Monday at SoundCloud.com for our weekly podcast. So until then, I'm Mark. Marcus. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.